Tonight, sports journalist and broadcaster Taylor Rooks joins us to cover whether it's more dangerous to be an NBA superstar or a SpaceX rocket test pilot. It's time for Tuning Out Sports. I'm host nicknamed the Saliva Tsunami by the first girl I ever kissed, Jonathan Keene. Let's bring in our guest, Taylor Rooks. Thanks for joining us, Taylor. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. I'm happy to be here with you. Taylor, the big headline this week was the suspension of Draymond Green after the victimless crime of stomping on DeMontis Sabonis' chest. Take us through what happened and tell us how the NBA is supposed to appeal to young people if the league punishes superstars for acting like toddlers. DeMontis grabbed Draymond's leg. Draymond says he had nowhere to land um, except for kind of on Sabonis. So landed on him got up, it was a bit of a stomp, and then kind of jumped over. Um, then I would say chaos ensued after that. There was some playing to the crowd. Uh, there was some some kind of hyping up the team. He was then ejected, uh, later suspended. I would say a very questionable suspension that I don't um, necessarily agree with at all. Now, to be fair, Draymond did show contrition afterwards by screaming, pussy at fans. But let me ask first, why did you disagree with that suspension? I think that it was excessive to have the suspension because it felt like a bit more of a reputation suspension. Draymond got that ruling Mm. because he's Draymond. Um, The statement, I think, even said that the suspension was due in part to his history of what they deemed to be some unsportsmanlike acts. Then you could argue if you put any other name on that jersey, they don't get suspended. They get slapped with a fine ejection and we all move on. Uh, But Draymond is Draymond. And that's that's kind of what happened. Well, moving on, some believe TV ratings for the NBA playoffs are way up because of competitive parity. Do you miss the days of having the same billionaire piano key mouth child bride having dipshit holding the championship trophy every year? Um, I do not. Uh, I like the idea of having no idea who is going to win. And that is not me saying I don't like watching greatness. I like when there's teams that are dominating. Uh, I don't know if I'd phrase it in the way that you did, but I do like the idea of having some new champions. Under the new CBA, players need to play 65 regular season games to be eligible for postseason awards. Now, in future CBAs, can we expect owners to mandate players be missing at least three limbs before they can sit out a game? You know, you can never underestimate owners. They might do, uh, they might say you have to be missing four limbs uh, and that would have to be a qualification. But I am kind of on the fence about this um, 65 game minimum. I think it could be a little sticky. Even if you look at last season, there was four players on an all NBA team that played less than 65. Right now, Giannis is one of the MVP candidates. He only played 63 games. Embiid just made it by by playing 66. So I'm not saying it's an arbitrary number because it's not, but you're definitely going to see a shift in the names that we see get these awards and make all NBA teams. And I don't know if the owners are going to like how this affects, you know, their, their super maxes and extensions and contracts. And so much of it is based on, on all NBA. So the owners might not think it's going to get to them now, uh, but it will eventually. I'm off to pay someone $700 to dress up like the Philly fanatic and tell me he's proud of the man I've become. So that's all the time we have. Thank you to my guest, Taylor Rooks. Thank you so much for having me, Jonathan. Our pleasure. Check out the Bleacher Report's Taylor Rooks X interview show and follow Taylor's NBA on TNT Twitter live streams throughout the NBA playoffs. And for more tuning, catch Tuning Out the News Wednesdays at 11.30 after The Daily Show on Comedy Central. Good night.